The rain kept on pouring that night, I remember. We were just one big happy family coming back home from the movie theater. Giggles and laughs, songs, and beautiful life filled the car. Drops of water splashed on the windshield as the wipers hastily threw them away. I loved them so much. They were my driving force. The light of my eyes, the moon of my nights, and the sun that filled my sky up and chased all the gray clouds away. The stars shining bright in the dark canvas of the night. Daddy, look out. My daughter screamed. The skidding tires and the breaking glass broke the silence of the night. I woke up at the hospital all alone. This wasn't happening. Two faces I'd never see again. Two lives were destroyed in the blink of an eye. I just couldn't avoid the other driver in time. I didn't see him sooner. Oh, the guilt was crawling inside me like a parasite. I was left all alone. Grief and solitude became my sun and moon. The stars on my sky now bore infinite sadness. One moment of looking away was all it took. One tiny second that turned into an eternity of sorrow and despair. I have never recovered from this. All the years that followed found me looking down at the glass of whatever I was drinking. The nights were long, cold, and sad. There were mornings where I found myself in parks or near the lake, reeking of alcohol. The nights before were just a washed out patch of darkness. My home smelled like a grave. The miasma of my rotting soul combined with the smell of booze and the choking smoke of cigarettes made me nauseous. I always wondered if it will ever end. All this suffering, all this chaos that was living, nesting inside my head. Its roots were strongly connected to the fertile soil of my brain. An existence engulfed in darkness. How I wished for it all to go away. The sadness, the guilt, the despair that invaded my memory of that night. Happiness was an alien concept for me. I just wanted the guilt and grief out of my body. I started doing research online, first on the visible part of the internet. I looked to see if there was a cure for guilt, if someone had invented a treatment for ending grief. I knew it was impossible, but that didn't stop me. Then I tried going on the dark web. I found a marketplace page where they sold all kinds of medicine, pills for whatever you could think of. I typed in grief pills, more out of curiosity than actually hoping I'd find something genuine, some miracle that would take it away forever. A chat box opened. Hello, young man. I got just the right thing for you. The one thing that will provide closure and end your hurt once and for all. You don't have to pay any money for it. It should be on your doorstep any second now. Enjoy the journey. It's all that the message said. A countdown started. Five, four, three, two, one. The screen turned black and I heard the doorbell ring. This made me scared. I instantly felt like I shouldn't have gone to that place. I've heard tales about things that happened there or to the people that bought different products from the dark web. I rushed to see who it was, only to find a small box wrapped like a present. I took it inside. Visibly shaking and sweat coming down my temples, I just looked at it for a couple more minutes. I finally decided to open it. Inside the small box, there were three pills filled with a thick crimson liquid. It resembled blood. There was also a small piece of paper at the bottom of the box. I carefully took it out. The instruction said to take one pill every 24 hours and do not exceed that dose under any circumstances. I laid the box aside for a moment. I don't know why or how, but the moment I put my fingers on those pills, a fear so great struck my soul as if a lightning had just crashed on the ground. A storm was now raging deep within me. I knew nothing good could come out of me swallowing those pills. I just knew it. I soon found myself soaked in sweat. This fear that was now coursing through my veins wasn't like anything I felt before. 
While changing in a new set of clothes, I asked myself what would be better for me. To carry the burden of guilt for my whole life or to swallow those pills. I took the first one right away. Nothing happened for a whole day. Then the next one. Still nothing. I prayed for something to happen after I took the last one. I waited for a few hours and finally gave up and turned to the bottle, got drunk, and went to sleep. I began having nightmares about the night of the accident. Then something woke me up. Wake up, young man, the voice told me. I jumped out of bed and screamed when I saw the creature standing in the far corner of the room. It almost touched the ceiling, and it slightly crouched. Its body was concealed under a hood of smoke, and his long arms stretched out until they touched the floor. Its nails were long and sharp. They violently touched each other, making a sound that resembled the sound chalk makes when it's pulled down on a blackboard. Two silvery lights were droning inside his eye sockets, making an electrical sound while doing so. I am here to lead you to them. That's all you wanted, yes? That's why you summoned me, to help you with your grief. You drank my blood, so here I am. Its voice is a strange insect-like alien song. A dark horror bloomed inside my chest. Its flowers revealed a grotesque fear that was ripping and tearing through my soul as fast as a scythe rips through a field of grass. I thought I was hallucinating or that maybe I was very drunk. No, he was as real as it got. The creature's name was Somber and he could take me to them. To my wife and daughter, I could tell them everything I wanted, everything left unsaid, I could go and see them one last time. I have to warn you, though. The road will be dangerous and unspeakable horrors wait for you there, Somber told me. Why would you want to help me? What could I possibly offer you that you don't or can't have? I asked, while almost choking on my words. We'll talk about that later. So, do we have a deal? He asked. His words felt like wasps coming out of their nest, buzzing and droning. I nodded, tears rolling down my face. The sadness I was feeling combined with this new level of intricate fear was a whole new sensation to me. I didn't care about the cost. I only cared about seeing my wife and daughter one final time. The creature opened itself up and I went through. Its split chest had teeth on both sides. The razors caressed my arms when I stepped inside. Blood poured in tiny rivulets, a crimson map of rivers now decorating my arms. It swallowed me whole and I felt carried away, to another realm, to something timeless and spaceless. Elsewhere, I heard bones crunching and flesh squishing as Somber's chest got back together. See you on the other side, young man. I will get them out for you, out from that place, he told me. I was in an alien place, floating around in the vast and endless space. There were millions of bright lights surrounding me, little white dots on the pitch black canvas stretching before me. Moving forward, I noticed a strange bright light that was growing bigger and bigger. It was a circular ball of purple light that pulsated and droned. I went through it as well and then I arrived at my destination. Somber was there waiting for me. I arrived in front of a giant tree with a hollow in it, its roots sticking out of the black soil. The grass was green, drops of dew laying on it. There was no sun in the sky, yet it looked like a normal day. I asked the creature what this place was. This is half of what your kind calls heaven. This is being every gentle soul, every innocent, every human person that never did any wrong willingly comes after the pass away, he said. Terror struck my heart. I asked myself if I was dead and if the creature had deceived in presenting me with a gift that it knew I could never refuse. What if he dragged me to that place and killed me in the process? I felt my heart drumming inside my chest a sensation of heat forming at my temples. 
Did I die? This was the price I had to pay to see my wife and daughter again? And what about the other half of heaven? I asked, fear and curiosity blooming in my mind. Hopefully you will never have to find out about that part or be there after you die. You are as alive as you were before. Don't worry, he replied. Now I need to extract your family from the clouds. That's where they are now. He got inside the tree hollow and I was left all alone. At one point, I saw some winged creatures in the sky. They seemed to be burning. They looked minuscule from where I was standing. I turned around and saw my daughter and wife coming out from the tree hollow. Tears began running down my cheeks as I heard both their voices calling out for me. Somber was just behind them. I hugged both very hard. They were looking the same as that night. We talked for a few minutes and I told them how much I miss them every single day. They didn't cry. We'll always be here, Tom. Waiting for you, my wife Layla said. Yes, Daddy. Don't be sad. I love you very, very much. You can hug my teddy bear when you miss me, Daddy, Samantha said. My beautiful daughter. My meeting with them was cut short. A large whirring metallic noise shook the sky. Oh, I didn't see this coming. Please, go back in the tree hollow before he sees you. Somber told my family. They started to whimper and they run inside and back to the good part of heaven. I finally saw my family again. One of the creatures circling the sky came down. The ground trembled when it landed. It had six wings four of them concealing its body. The other two were used for flying. Its face resembled a human's face, although it was contorted. It held a burning spear in its hand. It fixated somber. It let out a high-pitched scream that pierced through my heart like the horror you'd meet at the end of the world. I asked myself if that was an angel. Somber's right arm turned into a dark chromium blade. They started to fight. Somber hit the angel first, damaging one of the flying wings. The angel retaliated and hit Somber's shoulder with the spear tearing a small hole in it. They fought and fought for what seemed an eternity. I just stood and watched in horror as blue blood was spraying out from the angel. Somber had cut the other flying wing now. He finally managed to kill the angel. A pool of dark blue liquid was taking shape under the carcass. Turn around, please. You do not want to see this, Somber instructed me. My face was probably white from the devastation I just witnessed. I did as I was told. I heard squishing sounds. Somber was eating the dead angel. His hunger was immense. A ravenous beast eating another monstrosity. It finally stopped. I turned around only to see bones and feathers tossed around. Somber ate with its chest and mouth. The spear was mere ashes now. I could see the heart of the obliterated angel through the remains. Somber took it and placed it inside his chest. Now, I finally have a heart again. I am whole. I can feel again, he told me. He sobbed a little and I stood in horror as I saw the heart was beating again. Surrounded by electric pink light, it filled Somber with small little reddish bolts of lightning. That was the price you had to pay. I was counting on getting one of the damn angels angry. I used your grief for my benefit. For that I am sorry, he said. I felt angry and used, fearful at the same time, but I felt like a whole burden was just taken off my shoulders, guiltless and griefless. The angel took those away from you. You are free of them now, Somber said, sighing, while being in the angel's presence that happened. Hey, I saw my family again. For that I will be eternally grateful to you, no matter what, I said, my voice shaking. The horror of what I just witnessed infected my blood. A slit just opened behind me in the air and you will see them again after you die.
No one knows about what you did here with me. His voice felt like a chainsaw tearing through my mind. He said I should go back home. He snapped his fingers and I was instantly pulled in that slit. The void surrounded me on my way back home. I floated in the eternal darkness like I had no weight. I, I was standing in the middle of my living room. The wounds from Somber's chest teeth were still fresh. I've seen so many things and the horror of that will follow me for the rest of my life. I wondered if I would ever see Somber again. Not in this life, but the next. What I know is that my wife and daughter will always be watching over me.